Here's an interesting question. How did you get into automotive engineering? <laughs> <laughs> well, probably like, like many people in my position, spend enough of your boyhood years in the garage <laughs> and uh, it's, a, it's a great path. I, I really enjoy it. Uh, people say I'm a bit passionate about what I do and it, it's definitely, it's a, it's, a fun, it's a fun environment to be in. Well, it does come across that you are passionate about what you do, and, and, and that's how you would describe yourself, right? Yeah, no, no question. And uh, in driveline and four-wheel drive systems, working on Jeep is, is pretty much the pinnacle. We get a great vehicle to start with. We can implement great four-wheel drive systems, and it really gives us the latitude to have a four-wheel drive offering off-road. Well, does the vehicle need to be parked or moving to operate select train system? That's another question. A couple mm. of times that's popped up. The select train system is, is fantastic. It gives the operator different modes to select. So the standard mode is auto. and In auto, the four-wheel drive system will automatically and intelligently decide if you need two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive. That's the best method for maximizing your fuel economy. If the driver were to select any, if it's if they live in the snow belt and they, they choose snow as their uh, as their setting, the transmission, the brake system, the four wheel drive system all work in concert to, to give the best driving experience in snow. Sand and mud is, is a great uh, a great select terrain mode that showcases transmission shift patterns with four wheel drive distribution, but it can operate at any speed. So even engaging the all wheel drive. The, the system can be synchronized and uh, fully engaged at any speed. One of these uh, Jeep Cherokee models that's going to be available is called the Trailhawk. Um, that sounds exciting. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Tell me a little bit more about it. The Trailhawk is my favorite. It's, it's by far the most capable in the segment, but it comes with all the four-wheel drive systems of active drive lock. So when you're going off-road, you have the low range, you have a locking rear differential. It's also packaged with, with skid plates, so you don't damage critical components. It has uh, the best ride height of the three for off-road and ground clearance, departure angles and approach angles right around 30 degrees. So it, it's truly capable off-road. And then uh, wheels and tire combination is really accents the styling as well as the red tow hooks, which I think are pretty cool. So if you're uh, not an off-road person, for example, and you're, you're looking at the trail hawk and kind of drooling, is this something you should continue to look at or, or just pass it by? Well, it, if, you're, if you're looking for style and, and that fits your style, it's great. It's, it's on-road mannerism is, is perfect as well. It, you don't have to sacrifice from going to one of the Active Drive 1 systems. You're not sacrificing the on-road feel. We have another question from our uh, viewers. Uh, given the 8.7 inches of ground clearance comparable to a Subaru and the lack of suspension travel articulation, is this advanced four-wheel drive wasted on this vehicle? It's, it's definitely not wasted. As Mr. Manley said in the, at the New York Auto Show, the Jeep Cherokee easily handled Hell, Hell's Revenge in Moab. Uh, <laughs> The four-wheel drive system does help put power to the wheels that can use it. And that's where the, the true low range and the locking rear differential will allow when terrain is not flat and stable or if it's sand and can move, that's when the four-wheel drive system will be at its best. Well, let's see what else is coming in here. <laughs> uh, Nothing at the moment, so I've got another question, okay? <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Um, I want to know a little bit more about the 9-speed and whether or not there are other benefits that are offered by it. Yeah, the, the primary benefit of the 9-speed, like we said, is, <clears throat> is fuel economy. This particular one it has... Uh, the shifts are, are fantastic. So when you're... When you're on road, it it behaves like a any transmission you've driven before, only uh, better shifts, right? But in low range, 
we are able to take advantage of it as well. And we can very easily tap into the, to the gears in the upper range that would normally be like an overdrive or highway usage. We can use those off-road to get the control, to get the driver the confidence he needs off-road. Another one, does rear axle disconnect completely when traction accommodates front wheel drive? That, that's a good question, and, and we want to make sure that we do. That from the beginning, we've always said that we need to fully disconnect. There are certain, anytime you have gearboxes, you can have potential energy losses or things that reduce the efficiency. So, yeah, when you're, when you're able to, to drive in two-wheel drive and the system disconnects, it disconnects completely. So it approaches the economy of a two-wheel drive car. Another question from our viewers, are all three 4x4 systems available on all the Cherokee models? Mm. <clears throat> yeah, your, your Active Drive 1 and, and 2 are, are available on a, the Sports and the Limited. Uh, the Trailhawk always has the Active Drive lock. And are all three 4, well, oh, I did just did that one, okay. <laughs> Uh, we've got half a question here, so I'm going to wait on that. Oh, here, here it comes. Can Rich explain the select train and how it works? No problem. Select train, like, <laughs> like I said, it's, it allows us from a four-wheel drive standpoint to know what the driver wants. And, and that's very unique and, and it's very useful to us. So in a, if the driver selects a sand mud or a rock mode, we know that they want as much power as they can get. So the engine can produce the power. The trans will modify its shift points so that we have torque available. And then we can distribute that torque front to rear. Uh, in, in some modes, like a sport mode, which is available on, on both systems or all three systems, we can channel more torque to the rear. So if you want to drive in a, spirited fashion. You can <laughs> put more torque to the rear and, and have a, a little different character to the vehicle. Okay, we have another one here. What are the maintenance requirements <coughs> um, for the different four-wheel drive systems? One of the goals of, of the project here was to keep it a, a maintenance-free system. So even though we have the traditional high point gearing, we have planetary gearing. The systems are lubed for life and don't require regular maintenance. So uh, that's definitely a benefit as far as we could tell. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> okay, so very minimal maintenance. Y yeah, there's, it's, it's not designed to be, to be maintained. You, you can get in it, you can use it, you can go off-road, and you can, you can go drive Hell's Revenge in low range and have a great afternoon and then when you leave the trail and get back on the road, shift in the, your auto mode or out of four low, and as long as conditions permit, you'll be in two-wheel drive mode and have maximum efficiency. Perfect. It, it, it truly sounds like no matter where you live in this country, Jeep's Cherokee, Jeep Cherokee's got you covered. That, that was the plan, and I think, <laughs> I think we've delivered here. <laughs> All right, let's see if we've got uh, more questions. Yep, we do. How does the Tiger Shark engine compared to the new 3.2 liter V6? It's a different feel. Uh, the Tiger Shark, again, it uses the multi-air two technology, uh, 184 horsepower, I think we claim. So the power is there, but because of the transmission and the, the four wheel drive setup, we can use the, the torque that's available. And you can get the Active Drive 2 coupled with the, the Tiger Shark. The 3.2 liter gives you a little different feel, more of the conventional V engine. Uh, coupled with the Active Drive 1 or 2, it's uh, both, of them, both of them feel great on road. Uh, what are the crawl ratios for the Cherokee? Boy, they're coming oh. in here. Yeah, well, it, <laughs> well that's, a, that's the thing, if we were gonna maintain the Jeep capability and, and truly deliver for the Jeep enthusiast. We need to need to have these crawl ratios with the 3.2 liter. It's a four point or 48 to one, 
and with the V6, it is 56 to 1. Both are, are fantastic crawl ratio, but we have a just differentiation because of the, the gearing between the engine and the wheels. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I don't see any more questions at the moment, so let's just see if there's something on my list here that I wanted to ask you. Um, Well, I think I've covered just about right. everything here, Rich. Is there something you want to add? Have I missed uh, something? I, I know just from the response we get, people on the road and, and some of the, the conversation earlier, we know that people are eager to see these cars, and uh, I think people are going to be... That's a good thing. That's a, yeah, it's great. <laughs> and, and I think that enthusiasm from the Jeep community will be there. It's, it'll, when they finally do get to drive the cars, they're going to be impressed. That's good to hear. Thanks so much, Rich, for being our guest here this evening. You're welcome. And coming up this Friday, we'll be live streaming our What's New program from the Chelsea Proving Grounds in Chelsea, Michigan, beginning at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. So join us for interviews with Chrysler Group brand executives as they look at what's new for 2014. In the upcoming weeks, we'll continue our series on the all-new 2014 Jeep Cherokee with segments on design, technology, and safety and security. Thanks for joining us. We hope to see you back here next time on Behind the Wheel.